How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another nightly review. Today, I will be going over game four of round one against the Wild. The Golden Knights take this one 4 nothing and go up 3-1 in the series. So let's get into it. So Zach Parise was in after uh, Marcus Johansson got injured in the last game. He had a broken arm. Apparently, he got surgery on it. That can't be fun. So Parise's in, and then they added Nick Hague in to the Golden Knights lineup. Uh, McNabb's out. Don't know why. But yeah. So the Golden Knights start the fourth line again, which... Yeah. So there's an early scrum, which is about 11 seconds in. And out of that scrum, Carrier gets a roughing call on Matt Dumba. How does Carrier get the roughing call there? Um, because I, you know, I watched the game. And it seemed to me like Dumba skated over to Carrier and threw a punch. How does Carrier retaliate? Yes, but how does Carrier get the only penalty out of that? Anyway, so on that power penalty kill, the Wild get nothing. Then the Golden Knights, this was an evenly played game. The shots don't tell the story of this game, really, but it's pretty evenly played. So the Golden Knights did what they needed to, and that is when they got shots, they were usually pretty good shots. And yeah, they they this was a probably the most evenly played game of the series so far, at least with how the flow of play was, because I'd say through all three periods, the play seemed even, but the Golden Knights definitely got the better chances when they needed to. The Wild got nothing because Marc Andre Fleury played great and the defense supported him. I don't know what Cam Talbot is supposed to do when two of the three goals that he faced were basically breakaways. So, yeah, so after that penalty kill, Marsh, so we would get the next chance. Then Nick Waugh get the chance. Nick Waugh as we'll talk about later, had a very good game. Dumbo would get the next chance of the game. And then White Cloud would hit a post. Uh, after that, Flurry would stop Viala. And Felino would get a tip in front that would miss. That was a pretty dangerous chance. And then uh, Kaprizov got high-sticked, I believe, by Haig. And he went down the tunnel and came back just for some repairs. I just thought that was notable. Uh, then after that, Nick Wass saved a goal. Flurry got caught behind the net, and Wass swatted it away from in front of the net. And they skate down the ice. He gives it to Kolasar. Kolasar gives it back to him. And Wass shoots and scores on the same play just seconds later. It's one nothing Golden Knights. After that, Erickson Eck would score. However, it was overturned for goalie interference. Now, I can see why a lot of people are questioning why it was goalie interference. Felino is in the blue paint, and he does want Flurry. Now, it's debatable whether he skates into Flurry or whatever, but he's in the blue paint. You have to give the goalie his crease. And that is why they overturned it. People say, it's a goalie interference. It, it's the correct call. It's not the most egregious goalie interference I've ever seen, no. But it is the correct call. After that, Talbot would rob Riley Smith on the two-on-one. Then Kolasar would get a big chance. Flurry would then stop a scramble. Tuck would go to get repairs after he collided with Stone. And then Marsh so would get a chance. After that, Susie would cross-check Yanmark. His stick broke off of Yanmark. And, well, that's how you make an easy call. Martinez would get the only chance of that power play. They were about 10 seconds of that power play when it got to period two. But, yeah. After that, Haig would get a chance. And Flurry would stop Viala. But... Alex Tuck would fly through Dumba and Spurgeon, I believe, and get his own breakaway, and he would score from Stevenson and White Cloud to make it 2 nothing. Alex Tuck just turns into Connor McDavid sometimes. He really does. And it's weird, because if he could ever find that consistently, he could be an absolute star. He's a great player, but I would love for him to find that consistency in the way that he scores. Because the way that he can skate and the speed that he has and the size that he has, ugh, 
Alex Tuck, what a goal, made his own breakaway. That is something I don't see a lot of players do. After that, White Cloud would high stick Zach Parise. And it was definitely unintentional. It kind of reminded me of the, the high stick that Malkin did a few years ago, where he got suspended for it. I won't be shocked if White Cloud gets fined out of this. But it was a pretty egregious high stick, and Parise got a split lip, and, well, it's a four-minute double minor. So out of that, Flory robs Kaprizov early, then he stops Nick Bonino. But the power play is getting tired. Mark Stone steals the puck from Dumba and outskates everyone, flies in, scores. One of the greatest sellies of the playoffs so far. Mark Stone with a shorthanded breakaway goal, all unassisted by himself, 3 nothing Golden Knights. And for the rest of that penalty kill, Flurry would stop Eric Zanak, who got a breakaway with a few seconds left. But that was it, and I think that's the game. That's the game right there. How much more demoralizing of a four-minute power play could you get? You don't score on it. You allow a shorthanded breakaway. And just when you have hope, when Eric Zanak has the breakaway, you're like, wow, the, the Wild could get a goal out of this. No, Flurry stops him. I don't know how much worse it gets. Uh, after that, Flurry would stop Cole, and then Tuck would miss on another big chance. And then Flurry would stop Eric Snack and Spurgeon, and that would be it for the uh, for the second period. A lot of even play, a lot of periods of this of play in both the second and third period, where not a lot of chances were happening. The Gold Knights were doing a very good job of clogging up the neutral zone, and the Wild defense was playing pretty well. Other than, you know, of course, allowing the two breakaways. But, yeah, the Golden Knights were very opportunistic in this game. And that's something they need to keep up throughout the playoffs. Uh, so going to the third period, by the way, the Wild outshot them 11-5. to So two goals on five shots is pretty good. In the third period, Zuccarello would stop Tuck's chance. Uh, then Yanmark would get a chance. Carey would get the next one. And then Flurry would stop Dumba. Uh, Theodore would be the next player to get a chance. Uh, Flurry would then stop Fiala, and in the Wild would get a huge scramble. It's in the crease, and Martinez would sweep the puck out. Uh, then Sturm's chance was blocked by Reeves. He was right in front of the net. Reeves was probably the best defensive play of the game, at least one of them, uh, of, hi of his game, not the whole team's, because of Nick Waugh. Uh, anyway, then Cam Talbot would get pulled with about four minutes to go in the game. Flurry would stop Parise, and then Marshy and Yanmark would fail to score on the empty net. Yanmark would pass it to Marshy and unselfishly, but Marshy had a guy in front of him, so it was blocked. And then after that, eventually, Nick Waugh would get it, and he would score from Yanmark and, Kol and Kolasar on the empty net. And that was it for this one. The Golden Knights win this one. Four nothing shots in the third period were 13-4 to to the Wild. And shots in the game, 35-18, to 18, so Marc-Andre Fleury definitely had his work cut out for this one and for him in this one. But the Wild really didn't get that many huge chances. Fleury did, make, did have to make big saves. You have to make big saves in every game, but Fleury really didn't have to do a lot of second and third chances. So Golden Knights defense helped him out a lot, and the offense worked when it needed to. So I think those scoring woes are finally over. They've scored at least four goals in their last three games. And so, yeah, Golden Knights 0 for 1 in the power play. Wild 0 for 3. Uh, three stars of the game for me would be Flurry, Wah, and Stone. Just a great game for the Golden Knights. I didn't really see a player who had a bad game. They just played an overall really good game. And, yeah. Now, I'm going to talk about this because I kind of want to. But the uh, Wild fans on Twitter last night and uh, today are complaining about the refereeing in this game. Yes, the three power plays that you got to the Golden Knights versus their one. Yes, yes. Uh, it's it's the ref's fault uh, for allowing the Golden Knights to score that shorthanded goal. It's the ref's fault for allowing the uh, the Golden Knights to, uh, you know, to win the game. You know, the refs can't hand you the game every night. And uh, if they're talking about the goalie interference call, the referees are not the ones who make that call. It's... Toronto. Toronto makes that call. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's you know, the replay guys in Toronto, they're the ones who make the call. It's not, it, it, it is, it was goalie interference and they called it as it. The refs did not control this game. There were a lot of calls that went unanswered. There was a lot of cross checks that didn't get called. There were some high sticks that didn't get called. There were some hits that didn't get called. That's just playoff hockey. 
The Wild did get three more power, two more power plays, though, than the Golden Knights. And what did they do on those power plays? Not much other than get scored on. So without that out of the way, that is it for this one, guys. If you want to get my thoughts on the game during the game, you can follow me on Twitter at 2 underscore pad. And that is it for this one, guys. I will see you next time.